Understanding the flow of the Android APK build process, the execution environment, and code compilation. Unveiled in 2007, Android has undergone lots of changes related to its build process, the execution environment, and performance improvements. There are many fascinating characteristics in Android, and one of them is different CPU architectures like ARM64 and x86. It's not realistic to compile code that supports each and every architecture. This is where Java Virtual Machine is used. JVM is a virtual machine that enables a computer to run applications that are compiled to Java bytecode. It basically helps us in converting the compiled Java code to machine code. By using the JVM, the issue of dealing with different types of CPU architectures is resolved. JVM provides portability, and it also allows Java code to be executed in a virtual environment rather than directly on the underlying hardware. But JVM is designed for systems with huge storages and power, whereas Android has comparatively low memory and battery capacity. For this reason, Google has adapted an Android JVM called Dalvik. Our Java source code for the Android app is compiled into a .class file bytecode by the Java C compiler and executed on the JVM. For Kotlin source code when targeting JVM, Kotlin produces Java-compatible bytecode thanks to Kotlin C compiler. To understand bytecode, it is a form of instruction set designed for efficient execution by a software interpreter, whereas Java bytecode is the instruction set of the Java virtual machine. And to note, Java bytecode is not equivalent to Dalvik bytecode. Each Android app runs on its own virtual machine. From version 1.0 to 4.4, it was Dalvik. In Android 4.4, along with Dalvik, Google experimentally introduced a new Android runtime called Art. Android users had the option to choose either Dalvik or Art runtime in Android 4.4. The dot class files generated contains the JVM Java bytecodes. But Android has its own optimized bytecode format called Dalvik from version 1.0 to 4.4. Dalvik bytecodes, like JVM bytecodes, are machine code instructions for a processor. The compilation process converts the .class files and the .jar libraries into a single classes.dex file containing Dalvik bytecodes. This is possible with the dx command. The dx command turns all of the .class and the .jar files together into a single classes.dex file written in Dalvik bytecode format. To note, dex means Dalvik executable. Since Android 4.4, Android migrated to Art, the Android runtime from Dalvik. This execution environment executes .dex as well. The benefit of Art over Dalvik is that the app runs and launches faster on Art. This is because dex bytecode has been translated into machine code during installation. No extra time is needed to compile it during the runtime. Art and Dalvik are compatible runtimes using dex bytecode, so apps developed for Dalvik should work when running with Art. The JIT-based compilation in the previously used Dalvik has disadvantages of poor battery life, application lag, and performance. This is the reason Google created Android Runtime, ART. ART is based on ahead-of-time AOT compilation process where compilation happens before application starts. In ART, the compilation process happens during the app installation process itself. Even though this leads to higher app installation time, it reduces app lag, increases battery usage efficiency, etc. Even though Dalvik was replaced as the default runtime, Dalvik bytecode format is still in use, .dex. In Android version 7.0, JIT came back. The hybrid environment combining features from both a JIT compiler and ART was introduced. The bytecode execution environment of Android is important as it is involved in the application startup and installation process, understanding each part of the process. Source code is the Java and Kotlin files in the source folder. The resource files are the ones in the res folder. Android Interface Definition Language, AIDL, allows you to define the programming interface for client and service to communicate using IPC. IPC is Interprocess Communication. AIDL can be used between any process in Android. Library module contains Java or Kotlin classes, Android components, and resources, though assets are not supported. The code and resources of the library project are compiled and packaged together with the application. Therefore, a library module can be considered to be a compile time artifact. Android Library compiles into an Android Archive AAR file that you can use as a dependency for an Android app module. AAR files can contain Android resources and a manifest file, which allows you to bundle in shared resources like layouts and drawables in addition to Java or Kotlin classes and methods. JAR is a Java library and like AAR, it cannot contain Android resources and manifests. Android Asset Packaging Tool, AAPT2, compiles the Android manifest and resource files into a single APK. At this point, it is divided into two steps, compiling and linking. It improves performance, since if only one file changes, you only need to recompile that one file and link all the intermediate files with the link command. 
AAPT2 supports the compilation of all Android resource types, such as drawables and XML files. When you invoke AAPT2 for compilation, you should pass a single resource file as an input per invocation. AAPT2 then parses the file and generates an intermediate binary file with a .flat extension. The link phase merges all the intermediate files generated in the compile phase and outputs one .apk file. You can also generate r.java and proguard rules at this time. The output .apk file does not include the dex file, so the dex file is not included, and since it is not signed, it is an APK that cannot be executed. This APK contains the Android manifest, binary XML files, and resources.arsc. This resource.arsc contains all meta information about a resource, such as an index of all resources in the package. It is a binary file, and the APK that can actually be executed, and the APK that you often build and execute are uncompressed and can be used simply by expanding it in memory. The r.java that is output with the APK is assigned a unique ID, which allows the Java code to use the resource during compilation. ARSC is the index of the resource used when executing the application. Starting from Android Studio 3.1 onwards, D8 was made the default compiler. D8 produces smaller DEX files with better performance when compared to the old DX. R8 is used to compile the code. R8 is an optimized version of D8. D8 plays the role of Dexter that converts class files into DEX files and the role of DSugar that converts Java 8 functions into bytecode that can be executed by Android. R8 further optimizes the DEX bytecode. R8 provides features like optimization, obfuscation, remove unused classes. Obfuscation reduces the size of your app by shortening the names of classes, methods, and fields. Obfuscation has other benefits to prevent easy reverse engineering, but the goal is to reduce size. Optimization reduces the DEX file size by rewriting unnecessary parts and inlining. By doing desugaring, we can use the convenient language features of Java 8 in older devices. R8 outputs one DEX file called classes.dex. If you're using multi-DEX, that is not the case, but multiple DEX files will appear, but for the time being, classes.dex will be created. If the number of application methods exceeds 65,536, including the reference library, a build error will occur. The method ID range is 0 to 0 xffff. In other words, you can only refer to 65,536 or 0 to 65,535 in terms of serial numbers. This is the cause of the build error that occurred above 64k. In order to avoid this, it is useful to review the dependency of the application and use R8 to remove unused code or use multidex. All APKs require a digital signature before they can be installed or updated on your device. For debug builds, Android Studio automatically signs the app using the debug certificate generated by the Android SDK tools when we run. A debug key store and a debug certificate is automatically created. For release builds, you need a key store and upload the key to build a signed app. You can either make an APK file with APK Builder and finally optimize with ZipAlign on CMD or have Android Studio handle it for you with generated signed APK option.